we've all heard the stories. I once caught a fish this big. Big Florida bass. Or this was the one that got away. But what's the story behind all of those tales? What drives people to oceans, lakes, and streams? Is it to connect with nature? Is it to live out man's oldest occupation? Or is it a chance to heal the soul with a time-honored family tradition? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. In fishing, there's the hunt, there's the challenge every time you hit the water, there's the camaraderie. You wanna put like a 10 push-up wager on? Yeah, let's do that. And then there's the story. Today I'm going to be fishing in Tampa Bay, Florida. My guest is the Vice President of Jail Marine Systems and Power Pole, Robert Shamblin. Robert knows these waters all too well, so we're gonna target fish in the flats. Today's gonna be really nice. The wind has laid down a little bit from what it was yesterday. Awesome. It was blowing in uh, 15 to 20 yesterday. Yeah. Uh, right on the spot that we're gonna be fishing. But uh, at any rate, we'll use the power poles, use the wind. Sure. Let it just kind of ease us down these banks over here on the west side. But, uh, should be, hey, I'm should all be a lot it, of fun. Man. See if we can get something ripping some drag for you That's today. what I'm talking about. <laughs> I need to hear a little screaming, baby. <laughs> Beautiful, skinny, pretty water. This is a flat? Yeah. All the way out to that point right over there. Wow. Uh, flat. All the way across. And uh, that, that spot I was telling you about on the way in mm -hmm. is right over there. Uh, see where that um, island that's right behind us? Mm -hmm. There's a sandbar right over there that's under the water at the moment. Yeah. And so the tide's still coming in, obviously, but this afternoon when it drops, um, we're, we can sit right on the other side of that, and that water's going to be flowing right over oh. that. So I hope it should, usually it's pretty good. Yeah, this is beautiful water. Yeah. Now, you look for clear water when you're fishing for reds and um, snow? I actually look for muddy water usually, because that means there's fish milling around in there. We have baits in that little front box in okay. there. There's uh, some silver paddle tails, uh. those, little, those little guys right there. I was talking to my son the other day about great teams, and uh, you can't have five Michael Jordans on the same basketball team. Well, that's the same thing in corporate America. I've been on some great teams in corporate America in marketing and sales, and it seems as though you and John have got it figured out. You guys are a great team, and you guys got each role figured out. John's got an engineering background and uh, is just a, a real genius when it comes to those types of uh, things, uh, obviously with the, inventing the power pole. Sure. Uh, and my background is in sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. and we actually worked together in uh, another business that John had prior to uh, power pole. Okay. Uh, and at that time, you know, we had uh, a friend that made a comment about us making a good team. Mm. And, uh, you know, so uh, I guess it's worked out pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's worked out pretty darn good. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, because not everybody's made for to work with each other, and um, there's a lot of great friendships that just could never be crossed and become good business relationships. So you guys got the best of both worlds to be able to be good friends and to, to be able to work together. That's powerful. Right down there where all those mullet are, that's where we're gonna catch fish. That's what I'm talking about, calling your shots, man. Man, this water is beautiful. I like the little bit of tent to it. Cast right over there in front of that. Far as we can. Oh, there he is. So oh, he's schooling you, huh? Oh. Drag for you. Oh, get over here. He's All right, out. stand he's right out. there. Let me get he's out. Let me get the net for you. Yes, sir. I was just pitching in that stuff. That's I was just about to say you're a, a flipping machine. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> Come to daddy. There we go. Bam. All right. <laughs> Woo. 
when you come to Florida and you catch some of these beautiful redfish, always make sure you understand the slot limits between 18 to 27 inches. So what we're going to do, we're going to measure this because we may even keep this beautiful puppy. And that one is definitely past 18, and this one is 20 and some change. In the bushes. Only in Tampa Bay, baby. I can't even remember the last time I caught a, a saltwater fish on artificial. That's awesome. Ah, it makes it all the much sweeter, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, man. You know, we've been casting, and I love casting and winding, but I even went to the fundamental part of my bass side, which I love just as much as the saltwater, which is flipping and pitching. So we start pitching and flipping towards these mangroves. And sure enough, when the tide's high, the fish should be around here, and that one just happened to be hungry and bit my bait. How about that, Trish? So Robert, the early days of Power Pole, man. Tell me a little bit about it, man. Well, um, you know, John was was out fishing and uh, was doing the typical thing that people do, using an anchor, trying to set it. And he was targeting some fish. And of course, he would swing wide and you know get a shot or two, and then be out of range. Um, you know, swing back, get a shot. So he was readjusting the anchor and worrying about line and scope and the other things you worry about with a traditional type of anchor. And he was thinking to himself, you know, gosh, if I could just sit right here, I could catch every one of those fish. Yeah. He spent about six months, you know, thinking about it. And when he figured out how he was going to do it, he, I was over at his house and he showed me with a, a set of Legos that he had made a little model of it with and it was really cool and uh, about six months later you know he had his prototype built then in 2000 after getting a patent and uh, a little bit of financing we had enough to build a uh, first batch of units mm -hmm. so he called me up and it was Memorial weekend of 2000 wow. and he said hey Rob you know why don't you come on over here with your girlfriend and you and I'll build our first batch of 50 anchors uh, and we did it on his porch started it out wow. yeah built that first batch of 50 on his what porch did that look like at the time well it looked pretty funny <laughs> when we were using all different kinds of stuff and uh, uh -huh. you know we um, just use what we had to make do and um, you know had that first drill press and started drilling holes and cutting metal and um, you know shaping the first knuckles and stern brackets and of course they were sand cast uh, so it was a lot of work but that's where it all kind of started. <laughs> Being the industry standard, PowerPole has sponsored some of the biggest names in tournament fishing. When it comes down to pro fishermen, you want the very best to give you every advantage over the competition. Fish on. Got him. Got him, Coach. Yeah! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Woo -hoo -hoo! Yes, sir. Oh. Oh. Okay. Is it a tarpon? Cobia? It looks like a cobia. It does. I think it is. It is. Oh my god, is that a keeper? Oh, oh my god. Dude. Look at that thing. Oh god. Yes, sir. Oh. 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 That's dinner, baby. Oh man, what a big one. Oh. I'm back on the other side with you. Come on, girl. Oh, what a beauty. Oh. Maybe, maybe. No. Okay. Yes! Yes! Awesome! Awesome! <laughs> Woo!
Yeah. Yeah, baby. Yeah. That is so weird. Woo. No, nice, no. Cobia. Yeah. Yes. That is awesome. Oh, yes. Look at that beast. Oh. <laughs> So what advice would you give other people who are looking to strive to be successful in a business venture like yourself? Well, first I'd say, you know, you have to believe in yourself and also that you have to believe and trust in other people as well. In order to grow a business like PowerPole as large as it is now, uh, you know, we had to put trust in other people and, uh, you know, empower them to be able to do their job and instilling that atmosphere at work where people feel empowered, uh, can make decisions and you know we don't micromanage but uh, for that person that's looking to maybe start their own venture or something like that I'd say believe it can happen, uh, it can and then you know you believe in other people too. That's you important. Probably, yeah probably need some help along the way too so. Hey, we're here at JL Marine System, home of PowerPole, and Robert's going to show us the game-changing innovations that has made PowerPole what it is today. Glad to have you here. Um, look forward to showing you around our place. Wait, 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 wait. You like espresso? <laughs> wow, how about that, man? This is the way you work around here. <laughs> I have to keep the energy level up. <laughs> it's a massive facility. This is one of our main assembly area. Obviously, everybody's putting finishing touches on extrusion arms. This is where they're getting stickers put on, the rubber inserts, and around the corner, they're actually assembling into the full power pole unit. This part of the assembly process really hasn't changed a whole lot over the years and these are pretty much the way we assembled them in the early days. Yeah, after everybody's put, put the pole together, he's now inspecting it, making sure that it uh, meets all the specifications, the nuts and the bolts, everything are tightened up exactly the way they're supposed to be. He's outfitting that tubing with some caps so that no debris can get into it while during the rigging process. And then this will be passed on over to our boxing department from, from RC. See how he had this uh, design and built, say, most sophisticated powder coating facility in the state of Florida for its size. Wow. Um, we brought in uh, experts to come in and design it. It's all computer controlled. Has uh, really helped the efficiency of the product from start to finish. The parts will come up here, they go on these racks, they lift them up, they put the racks in the dip tanks, and then they go into the oven over there. Then on the other side of that oven, they get hung up and go through the primer process. This is where all the pumps, motors are put together and tuned to operate the different power pole uh, anchors. A multitude of tests and settings on each and every one of these uh, prior to it going out is tested. And of course, John built all of these himself. Meet John Oliverio, CEO and inventor of power pole. You know, I, I, I did a lot of fishing and trying to use an anchor or a push pole was just not cutting it. I wanted to be, you know, within feet of where I planned on stopping, not the scope of my anchor allowing me to swing and sway. So, uh, you know, the, the wheels started turning one day in Sarasota Bay and I went home and got my Lego kit out and started thinking of ideas and making phone calls to hydraulic companies. And I came up with the articulating the what it is now, and I built one out of Legos. I actually carried this around in my man purse for several months <laughs> back in the day. Lenko sent me a hatch lifter. I built one, had it welded all together. I put it on my boat and it worked. And it hit the button, it would go down, and the boat would stop. I was like, wow, that actually works. I made another version after this that had the hydraulics. It's, um, it got broken in testing, mm. but I plan on putting it back together someday, making like a little museum, because we've nice. got the very first one, the second one, and the third one, all that were used in the prototyping phases before we actually made the first production. 15 years later, here we are. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, and we pleasure. really appreciate how you have changed the industry and where it's gone and how you have saved some of us bass fishermen <laughs> who like to fish pretty close to a lot of things and we can sit down and very be good. secure and catch fish, man. So thanks so much again, John. Thank you. Hey, to find out more about the show, check out AFishingStory.com. There you'll find out about our guests, our fans, and myself, Ronnie Green. 
And there's also a contact page because we'd love to hear from you. So check out AfficientStory.com. You know, just thinking about it, if you were to find three friends, people, relatives, and they were to describe Robert, what do you think they would say consistently come out of their mouth? Wow. Well, I hope the first and foremost thing they would say is that uh, my integrity is unquestioned. And second, I would hope they say that I always have a great attitude. And those two could probably be mixed in order either way. Yeah. Uh, and thirdly, uh, uh, I would hope they say that, you know, uh, I'm a good person, like to be around me and have a good time. How would you want people to remember you? Well, I think that's pretty similar to the first answer. I'd, I'd like people to remember that um, I was a good person and that, uh, you know, I had a great attitude and approached life with, uh, you know, a, a zeal and happiness and, you know, live life to the fullest uh, and did all of that with integrity and, you know, hopefully uh, left the world a little better place than I found it. That is so awesome. You know what, I think you have left the world a better place and your legacy will live long after you have moved on uh, with your kids, with your family, and then with the legacy you've built with the, the company you're with. So thanks so much for being on our show, man. We really appreciate it. Thank you. I saw, man, it was a hard charge. It was a tough day today. Yeah, it was. But we persevered, <laughs> and, and one thing I did see consistently, you smiled through all of it. Well, I'm having a great time, and I appreciate you having me on. I really do. Awesome. <laughs> Oh, I see him. Yeah. Oh, wow. Eat, girl. Oh, oh, oh. we got it. He's... Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. Can I switch wow. to a crab? Unbelievable. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I bow. Did I bow enough? Yeah. Okay. 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 Come to daddy. Oh. Oh. Ho, ho, ho. Where are you wow. hooking this crap? Welcome to Florida, baby. Hook this crab? Oh, come and get you some of this. Yes. Try a double hookup. Yeah. Yeah. With that. I don't know who's got who's hooked. <laughs> scream, baby, scream! Here we go. Is it Christmas? <laughs> oh. Get you behind. Ah, oh, look at her. Good damn morning. Don't you dare. Don't ever get a tarpon addiction. Come on, Ronnie. Yeah. <laughs> get that bitch now. Come She's on. right here. She has got some spunk. Okay. When we get this fish out, we're going to drug test her. She gotta be on steroids or something. This fish is strong. Wait. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is a beautiful tarpon. Only in Florida, baby. You can catch bass, tarpon, red, snook, the whole nine yards. You need to get here and get you some of this. You want to grab her? Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. It's very important that we revive the fish because she's expended a lot of energy. Um, so we're kind of controlling her a little bit along the boat, getting a lot of water in it, revive her a little bit before we just let her go. She's already compromised, and there are other predators that might be able to find her. So. We want to make sure she has a fighting chance to do what she does. It's a wrap. Check out the latest and greatest in the shallow water industry technology at PowerPool.com.
And until next time, we'll see you on A Fishing Story. I got my power pole down Stuck in the mud in the bottom of the lake Sitting so still in the